Yo, everybody, this is Bird to bring you guys a first person replay commentary. I'm going to be playing a Lena game. Uh, I know some people requested Lena a while ago and hadn't, made a, hadn't played a Lena game in a very long time, actually. I think this was my first Lena game in months, I think. Uh, but I'm playing to support Lena this game. I'm playing with um, Idra from SC2. I'm playing with uh, Miss Spite. And I think Blitz was Whiskers, I think. I'm pretty sure. And I don't think we knew the fifth guy. The fifth guy was a random who ended up being a really great individual, if I remember correctly. So. Um, the reason Lena is pretty strong is she has an AoE stun that has a really low cooldown. That's her second skill. It's called Light Strike Array. It's a skill shot. It's pretty hard to land, actually. It's not exactly easy. Um, and um, it's definitely her, her best early ability. Um, it's definitely her most important. If you can land the stuns, then your hero will be a lot stronger, basically. <laughs> Makes a big difference. Um, most people get around this, even in pro games, by having somebody else do a setup yeah. just to like have guaranteed reliable ways to disable. We unfortunately don't always get this option. So I do, of course, have the Arcana item, of course, Prepare and the Taunt too. Battle. I don't remember if I ever actually used it or not, but yeah. Okay, so we'll just go over skills quick. First skill is Dragon Slave. This does an AoE cone attack, basically. It's kind of like a line. It's not really a cone, but it shoots out in a line. It's uh, one of her farming abilities. Um, you basically use it in conjunction with Light Strike, right, to have pretty darn good nuke damage uh, around the time you hit level 7 to level 10, somewhere in there. Um, it doesn't do the best damage at level 4 at 280. It's a little bit low on a nuke, as is Light Strike, right, at 280, but, um, but considering that your hero is literally all nukes, it, it ends up being pretty strong. Her third skill is Fiery, fiery Soul, not Firefly. Um, as you cast the spell, you get a buff that gives you attack and movement speed, and it stacks up to three times, which means you can attack insanely fast. Um, if you cast a lot of spells very rapidly. Some people like to do like a battle Lena build where they do actually um, pick up damage items, they cast spells just to get attack speed, but um, I don't really recommend that build. Even even the games that I've kind of tried to do, like a carry Lena, it doesn't end up working out usually because your armor is so low and your HP is really not that great, so you don't have natural tankiness to go along with all these big damage items, so it doesn't usually work out very well. But if you guys are really far ahead, feel free to pick up a damage item, whatever. In most cases, 99% of the time you, you won't want to do this because it might lose you again. The Her ultimate is begins. a very simple range nuke. Um, it's like Finger of Death basically. It's uh, The scaling is a little different. They used to be almost identical spells in Dota 1. <laughs> but now it does 450 damage at level 1. This is less than what Finger of Death does. But the cooldown is much lower at 70 seconds. And if you get an Aghanim Scepter, the damage, increase, uh, the, damage is in the damage increases and the Scepter range also goes up by 50%. Rather than being 600 range, it goes up to 900, which is pretty nice. And since the cooldown does go pretty low, um, grabbing the Aghanims is not the worst thing in the world on Lina. Some people will hate on you and be like, oh, it's a horrible Aghanims or whatever, but the extra range increase is kind of nice. If you're playing a solo mid-roll, I think it's okay. If you're playing a hard support, you're almost always better to get utility items such as Force Staff, and I'm sure you guys will see me do stuff like this this game. So that's all of our skills, basically. The, uh, the level preference that I want to go for... I'm just trading hits here with bottom because I want to make sure that she stays out of EXP range. This is really important when you have a safe farmer and you have an offlane, especially a hero like Potom that is um, kind of a crappy, non-survivable offlane, basically. So my entire goal right now is literally just to make sure that she has to walk away. And you can do this by just, like, there's some basic principles of doing this, but basically only hit him if he gets to hit you is the important one. Oh yeah, if you guys didn't see it, we, we did have a jungling Ursa. We had an Ursa as well as a Phantom Assassin. And the uh, Spectre guy decides the last pick Spectre. He was asking um, PA to swap, and PA said no, and then he picked Spectre, and then he got really angry. So now he's pulling. So we have a pulling Spectre with a PL, or with a PA, so I was pretty happy about this. Um, so yeah, I, I will max out Dragon Slave first um, over Light Strike, right? The reason I do, um, do max Dragon Slave over Light Strike is that uh, Light Strike doesn't really need to be leveled up. It does obviously do damage, but the easy to land reliable damage is on Dragon Slave. I knew this guy was coming around the corner because I did have my Observer Ward up. I have to be a little careful about trading hits with him. But he is going to get scared away. I did cancel one of my last hits. If we check his armor levels, just to compare, he actually has two more armor than me, and he does 51 damage. I think his attack speed is probably a little bit faster than mine. Yeah, his stats look to be a little bit higher. So trading one for one isn't always the safest thing, because if he does arrow me, some really bad stuff could happen. But it's not the, it's not horrible. But again, I haven't spent that much mana. I've landed two light strike arrays for some extra damage, and obviously some extra right clicks on him are all I'm aiming to do. And this ward right here that I place obviously helps a ton 
for anticipating this. And again, same thing. I'm going to hide around the corner. I'm going to get a couple extra hits in. He's going to have to run away now. He maybe could have traded with me, but it just would have gotten a little scary. And at some point, I can just pop a clarity potion, go back up to full. And if he does ever commit, I can also use Dragon Slave for, what is this, 190 Dyer's magic nuke? Bottom tower is under These attack. both have really low cooldowns as well, by the way, 7 and 8.5 seconds. So you do want to throw your stun as often as possible during a team fight. And this does add up pretty significantly. It's a 1. 1.2 second stun duration, and it's AoE most importantly. So the AoE stun makes a huge difference because you can, of course, um, end up disabling multiple heroes on their team. So really good to land that in team fights. And every seven seconds that you stay alive is another, most likely you're going to stun somebody, basically. It's another chance at stunning a, uh, an enemy hero. And enemies and stuns on enemy heroes, obviously, as you guys I'm sure know by playing the game enough, is uh, it makes a really, really big impact. So so that's why it's really important to stay alive as lean as long as possible. Now, it's hard to do that because, again, you have an unreliable stun and you are squishy. So staying alive against heroes like Spirit Breaker can oftentimes be really challenging. But if you can stay alive, it makes a really big impact on your game. So, so again, Spectre did all the pulling. I've been trying to keep the bottom out of EXP and she's actually level 2. So she's the same level as me, which is, is pretty darn good, actually. So this is great for me. First blood. We see a first blood going on here. It's kind of hard to contest EXP at this range. Um, things might get under control shortly, but for now at least they're going to be a little weird. And I ended up picking up Fiery Soul here. In almost all cases, I will actually grab a second level of Dragon Slave. The reason I grabbed a Fiery Soul here is because basically everything I'm accomplishing right now is pretty much just trading hits with the bottom. Like, if I'm just trading hits with the bottom, I don't need a second level of Dragon Slave. In fact, the extra level of Fiery Soul really helps a lot because if I get an extra Fiery Soul, every time that I throw my stun just to do harass, then I get 40 extra attack speed and I can actually get an extra attack or two off. So that was my, my thought reasoning with grabbing an early level of Fiery Soul. I usually don't do this though. Most cases, I will literally just max out Dragon Slave and Light Strike Ray and get my ulti without picking up any levels of Fiery Soul. But the movement speed bonus isn't that bad either, honestly. It gives you 4%, and pretty much every time that you do cast a Light Strike Array, you will cast a Dragon Slave as well to, to nuke on your enemies, especially if they're grouped up, because you do want to hit as many people as possible. These. I tried to Dragon Slave to see if I can maybe catch Potom, but it missed. So, no big loss there. I, I got a CS, I spent a little mana, and I'm slightly more farm than I was before. Especially when my mana pool is so full, it's really important to do stuff like that. And that's another thing to point out, since Lena is an int caster, I don't really have to buy that many clarity potions. You can easily get by with none, honestly, um, on Lena. Uh, generally, it's better to buy at least one, just to cover your mana pool a little bit. But Lena has a really big int pool, as you guys can see. I'm already up to 33 int at level 3. What's her int gain? 3.2. That's actually a really good int gain. So her int gain is actually really good, 3.2. Which means you can usually get away with skipping your clarity potion in the early game, so feel free to do that if you want to. So we're considering going on the um, on the bottom if needed. Uh, we do kind of have a setup with the PA. I think that's why I picked Lena because Dagger is an okay setup. It's not super reliable. Obviously, something like Avenge Stun would be more reliable, but it's honestly not too bad. I'm gonna see an arrow come out again. Looks like he was trying to arrow me, I guess. But I picked up boots now. So I should be able to roam a bit more if needed. I could maybe go mid, but seems like Blitz is handling things okay. And I mostly just wanted to keep the bottom dead and stuff. So two levels of Dragon Slave now. I will be maxing Dragon Slave first. Again, it's reliable. The cooldown slightly lo uh, longer than Light Strike Array, but it also does a little bit more damage in the early game. By the by, the level four they do the same damage, but actually Dragon Slave does like 20 damage extra per level as of level 2 and level 3 so it's pretty okay to pick up and right here I just wanted to sap some EXP since nobody was mid and I get the benefit of also grabbing 2 CS and a harass which of course is completely worth it for me so I missed that last hit but I didn't really want to stay down there too long anyways so I'll just back off here I'm gonna go check for a rune or something even though it's 6 minutes I don't remember why this I did this maybe I should have just stayed mid but but regardless, I get some slight EXP. It's really important for supports to shift over into mid lanes like this sometimes. Sometimes it uh, affects my play negatively because I'll be like, oh, there's a lane with free farm. I should obviously sit here forever and take last hits because it's in a safe place. But sometimes it's a lot more important to team fight, especially when you have a stun because a stun can easily change the tide of a team fight or a battle. So I buy wards now. I'm a little late on this. It's about seven minutes. Usually you want to have them up as it uh, ticks over to nighttime. And the reason that's so important is because vision is really bad at night for almost all heroes. Um, in fact, 
I believe Potom has greater than average night vision. It's like 1,200. Everybody else is about 800. Um, and everybody else on our team, I believe, is about base. I think Nature's Prophet might have slightly higher as well, but I could be wrong about that. So I'm just going to go place a ward down in a place that's going to protect our carries. I'm actually surprised I didn't place it on the the, uh, the rune ward. I think the rune ward would have been really good this game because we have a jungling um, Ursa. If I, I think putting a ward up to protect the Ursa would have been pretty nice. But I've just kind of been running around it. I'm not really sure why. Maybe I was anticipating heroes being top or something. But oh, yeah, that's right. I decided to ward mid because he was getting ganked so much. So I put one ward uh, over here. Under Downside to you putting wards on the rune spots like this is that, unfortunately, you're not able to catch um, mid ganks. Was able to stun the spirit breaker at least. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. I was trying to juke there, but creeps out actually obviously spotted me out. So I ended up dying anyways. I was really sad that I was a little late to drop the observer ward there. If I would have put that down like two or three seconds earlier, I would have seen the spirit breaker coming, and I most likely would have been able to land a stun on him. If I landed a stun on the spirit breaker, then his charge fails, he doesn't get the stun off on the bat rider, and we would have had a really good chance of possibly, most likely picking him up. So I'm going to TP in here to maybe try to deny the tower. It's pretty scared of, honestly. But it looks like they're actually going to get scared. tried so hard for that catapult. God, I can't believe we didn't deny this. That's really scary. And now, I, I don't have a TP scroll. This is really unfortunate. So, don't have a TP support for the top lane. So this is basically what's going to happen most of the game, since they have really ganky heroes. And, and this is hopefully going to be a bit of a lesson about how to play against Spirit Breaker, because um, I think I did make a lot of good Spirit Breaker choices. Number one is wards. Wards are absolutely the base requirement. If you don't have wards, Spirit Breaker will always start his fight stunning somebody, and you won't have TP time in anticipation. And usually this the first stun is really important. It's it's hard, especially against the Spirit Breaker with Lina, because if he starts his ulti, he becomes magic immune, if he casts it. If he casts his ulti, he goes magic immune. So if my stun is too late, I will not stun him, and it'll completely whiff for 7 seconds. But usually you want to stun before the ulti lands. Looks like Bat's gonna die there. So I'm kinda like, feeling underfarmed and in a position where I can't actually cover the allies that I need to. I've been running between mid and top, repeatedly. But on the bright side, mid is not covered, so I guess I can get some free XP, maybe pick up a uh, level 6 from this. We then just notice the tower, which I'm gonna deny. I don't think I knew if the invoker was here or not, actually. Obviously you guys can see the charge on me, but I, I didn't know if this uh, was actually coming. And I was looking other places. Unfortunately he actually bashed me a, a second time there. But I didn't anticipate the charge. I kind of did, but I wasn't completely sure if it would be coming. But regardless, our PA got the, the kill, so it's pretty good for us because it does give her some levels. Uh, me dying sucks, of course. If Also, if I was watching my hero, I would I would have been able to see the Spirit Breaker charging in again. So, again, vision is a little bit of our loss. So I've now died twice. I pick up a magic stick. I'm level 5. I'm still not level 6. Getting level 6 is pretty big difference for Lina. Changes her into having only, what is this, like 300 nuke damage to having like, almost 800 nuke damage. She used a tango a lot earlier there, and he actually did walk into the arrow, so... If he would've used a tango immediately, he might've survived, so... Moderate mistake from him. And it looks a little scary to be able to take top, honestly. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get there in time. We don't have a glyph. They're probably just gonna take it. There's a charge going bot, as we can see from the replay. But again, we shouldn't know that. At least we don't know that. I wanted to pick up six here. Force them completely out of mana. I'm trying to do as many right clicks as possible. Yes. 
again. We s I could see that the Spirit Breaker was charging me, so I knew I was pretty dead at this point, so I just said whatever, I'll just do as much damage as possible. I also figured that I'd rather give the kill to the Ogre Magi at the bottom than the Spirit Breaker, so that's why I decided to stop and fight. Um, very important that we do blow up the Invoker as fast as possible though. There's a couple of heroes on their team that are usually like, kill those above all costs. And they would be Invoker, Spirit Breaker, and Potom. Nature's Prophet can still in the late game be an issue, but at least in this very early stage, the only hero that I'm really that concerned with is going to be... Let's see if I can get here in time. I do actually TP in time. Again, another TP scroll being used, because I have to try to be there to support my Like, TPs are so important. If he would have actually dived on the uh, the PA, I would have been there to at least defend a bit. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, heroes that you need to kill. Alright, at this point I knew there, and I guess that was actually creeps that spotted me out. I have to go back and heal. Uh, my HP is in an area where I have to be pretty worried about getting picked up. Alright, luckily they did get the invoker. But you can't have, you can't be missing 200 HP if you're against a Spirit Breaker and you're Squishy Lena. So I go back to base, I buy another TP scroll, and I'm going to go back out on the map and prepare to place wards and try to just support any allies who get charged. But yeah, knowing who to target in team fights is, is a really big deal. It's really important. Our Ursa does have an Aegis, but this doesn't look very good. I'm going to be pretty late for this. And this is where we should turn and fight, probably. My ulti was definitely a waste there. I think that was the one time this game where I really wasted my ulti, I thought. Actually took a lot from the uh, tornado. I decided to stun so that um, they could run away, but she actually TP'd out and she ended up surviving, so that was really close. Trying to get the uh, the PA to blink to me here. Unfortunately, he got he got chain stunned. So at this point, I'm going to go back to base. It's very important that you don't back before it's time to back, honestly. Uh, and I know a lot of newer players will have trouble with this. They'll see a team fight that's going vaguely bad, and they'll just book it. They like won't stop. But being able to turn around and be like, okay, maybe I should go back in. Maybe I can throw one more stun. Maybe I can throw one more dragon slave, and still help out. I, I just was able to afford a gauntlet. You guys are really proud of me. The invoker gets killed. But yeah, my ulti was definitely a waste on the Spirit Breaker, but I wanted him dead basically, and I, I don't know. He, he took a little bit too much burst too fast, and I wasted my ulti, but no big deal. The cooldown's back again. I can use it on Invoker next time, or Potom, or something like that. And the reason you want to kill those heroes is uh, they're obviously like stronger stronger examples of Lena, essentially. It's like they, they, have, they have strong abilities and nukes that if they get cooldown off, or if they survive any longer, it can be a huge pain in the butt for them surviving. So, gonna dragon slave for some reliable last hits here. I got all four of those, which is pretty good. I'm gonna be picking up an urn for my first item. It might have been smarter to just go straight arcane. It's kind of hard to say. Arcane is really good on Lena, and I dare say required if you're playing hard support. Her mana pool is, as you guys can see, I did like one combo and I was pretty much out of mana. And that's kind of how she works in the early game. And it's not that big of a deal. I was really worried about getting charged here. I just didn't want to chance it. If they hit an observer ward in that area, they would have started the charge there, and by the time I would have gotten somewhere else, I most likely would have gotten jumped on. So I just decided to TP back to base. This is actually on cooldown. This shouldn't be showing like this. But I think somebody top is getting charged. Yeah, it's going to be on the Spectre. He's going to go hide in the trees. Pretty good play by him. Unfortunately, we don't actually have any uh, detection here. But the benefits of me getting the urn, obviously, is that I get two gauntlets. Let's see if we can land a stun here. See, there's the uh, there's exactly what happened. Again, I just wanted to make sure he was dead. I like didn't want to chance him running away. I should have slaved it. A slave would have gotten the kill as well. I didn't. I really didn't need to ulti that, but. It's pretty important that you try to shut him down if possible. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> that was crazy watching it this time. I'm gonna go hide in the trees because I really didn't feel like dying. At this point I figured there was a ward on the top. Oh man, cold snap's good. No, he should have gone for the invoker, I think. So 
So almost have Urn. Almost got my ulti again. They have some pretty aggressive wards. And I saw that there was nobody bot, so I was gonna go bot to farm. I really should have started attacking those a bit earlier. Could have gotten both of those range creeps off the Dragon Slave. So I'd have like an extra 50 CS or something. Or Ursa almost has a Blink Dagger, so once uh, once she gets Blink Dagger, we should be able to blow people up a little bit faster. But basically our combo in every single fight should be Batrider pulls somebody out. Thanks, I land the stun as their um, lasso is about to end, and then I nuke them with everything. I just hit them with everything. Like, you gotta just kill. If you can kill one person at the start of the fight, even if it costs two people's ultimates, it's really useful, especially if we can get an important tier like Spirit Breaker or Potom or Invoker, especially Invoker. If we pick off Invoker at the start of the fight, it really wins us a fight. Because he's a big AoE monster, basically. You gotta kill those people. Alright, so now I got an urn. It's basically a bracer's worth of HP. I get some slight mana regen, and I can heal after people die, and it also gives me more nuke potential, if, I, if, if someone dies. And again, if you guys don't really know how urn works, it does 400 HP heal for your allies over 10 seconds, 40 HP per second. This can be stopped by uh, player damage. And uh, if you use it offensively, it does 150 damage. And this is pure damage, by the way. So this is actually equivalent to a 200 damage nuke. It's basically a 200 damage nuke over 10 seconds. So it's actually really good damage. Fortunately, our, uh, our Ursa actually miscommunicated there and ran the opposite way. They could have gotten that kill otherwise, most likely. PA is still farming here. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to get to this fight in time. So I just decided to farm. There's also a really big wave on the top lane. I figured there's also wards on high grounds in places, so I grabbed sentry wards. And this is also anticipation of the pot of multi, of course. It's like our uh, bat rider's still gonna die. Dyer's top so, is this is a really attack. common ward spot if they have a spirit breaker. And bam, there it is. So I stunned it, and I threw nukes for attack speed, by the way, if you're wondering why I did that. Because I wanted to kill the ward immediately. If you're dewarding, and you know that they can see you, there's a chance that the spirit breaker will start his charge. So I just didn't want to mess with it around at all. So I just threw both nukes to get attack speed, then I killed the ward, and then I backed off. Once we regain control of some of our farming areas, then we know the spirit breaker can initiate charges unless somebody else scouts it. And it should reduce the amount of times you get ganked. So these are like the rules to beating spirit breaker. You ward, you deward, and you TP support for your allies, if you're a support, and preferably you have a stun, or some way to, to maybe stop him from doing stuff. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. They obviously have really good map control over us, so if you look at their positioning, they're kind of in clumping us in, in a smaller farming area than, than they have. So, whenever you're not doing anything as Alina, by the way, um, one really good thing you can do, we'll see if they still have a ward here, and they do actually, so I get a second observer ward. These are two really common spots um, in almost all games. If people are buying Observer Wards and they're putting them aggressively, they're either most likely in that spot, like one of the two spots that I just sent you worded. They're almost always going to be there. If you're playing against pros or something, they're going to put it in places that still cover about the same area, but it's not really the same spot. This is a little bit of a dangerous place for me to farm, but it's going to work out okay. And I still don't have a TP scroll up, so maybe I should have been sitting by my owls. And at this point, I was scared about getting charged. And again, I throw everything to kill him. Using Urn aggressively. The Urn was a bit of a waste there, but I wanted to help out. So, again, stun the Spirit Breaker, and then you throw everything at him. You just kill the man. You have to kill him. Every time. Because if Spirit Breaker is dying, and not getting, if he, if he, even if he gets a kill, if he's dying immediately afterwards, he actually hasn't gotten that many kills. He's 1-5-5, five, and five, and preventing him from snowballing is like the most important thing that you can do. Looks like we have a Battle Fury on our uh, PA, which is pretty good. If we look at Spirit Breaker's items, by the way, he just got Treads, Mask of Madness. I actually think Mask of Madness is uh, not a very strong Spirit Breaker build. I don't I don't like it myself. Um, I, I don't almost never get Mask of Madness. I think the few heroes that Mask of Madness can be useful on are Sniper, occasionally, is, it's good for him if your opponent's last uh, lack um, gap closers. Uh, sniper, Mask of Madness can be okay. 
Um, other than Sniper, uh, Void can sometimes be good with, with uh, Mask of Madness. There's times in Spirit Breaker can be good with Mask of Madness, but not against our heroes, I don't think. So again, time to go save my allies. And again, this is one of those times where Mask of Madness is not a good thing. And he... It's mostly the player is not making good decisions is why he's dying a lot and we're doing okay versus him. Um, it's not very often that you get to play against a Spirit Breaker like that, but the benefits are that he's basically fighting one guy really deep against heroes that are a little iffy to kill. Like, I don't even know if he could have killed the PA solo, honestly. I figured there was a, a ward somewhere still in the base because he did get charged while he was in the jungle and I asked if he had just come back from the lane. And that's probably what he did. He went from the lane to the jungle. We're going to lose our Ursa again, unfortunately. She still does not have a blink dagger, despite being very close. And I can buy an extra TP scroll and go pick up Arcane Boots now, at least. I could have also ultied the, the SB in the last fight if I had Arcanes, but I did not. The last gank, that is. So. It helps when Spirit Breakers make bad choices, but but obviously it's it's generally very difficult to be able to shut them down. But it's it's basically very important that you cover your allies immediately, every time. So I bought Observer Wards instead, I'll go pick up some Arcanes. I don't really know where they were at this point, so I was definitely a little worried, but... But there we go, we got Arcanes. And I have to buy all the wards and sentries as well, since our dumbass Spectre picked Spectre for, for our offlane hero. So, as fun as that was. So now it kind of looks like I have too much mana, and this is kind of true, but again, uh, this is based, based on my positioning. I need to stand way behind my allies. If, I, if I'm if i the one that gets charged by Spear Breaker as well, we'll probably just lose the fight, or I'll die for sure. Maybe we won't lose the fight, because I'm not that important. It's not like I'm the one thing hinging our team to win, but um, me casting stuns is, is absolutely crucial. I'm going to throw a stun so that they can run out. And again, I burn my ulti, whoever is getting initiated on. I'm gonna have to TP to get close. Alright, we're able to kill the Spirit Breaker again. So whoever basically gets lassoed, I'm just gonna blow them up again. I'll use Slave, ulti, kill the guy. They die. I don't know why, but I just like see those opportunities now. It's kind of hard to explain, but like when you play enough Dota, eventually you'll just be like, okay, that guy looks vulnerable, and you will be like, this is a good chance, this is a good time to kill him, basically. So then I will kill him. This is a little, a little overly aggressive for me, maybe. I'll use my urn defensively. I maybe should have saved that. Um, keeping at least one urn around for, for combat is good. I mean, obviously, it will lower his HP, but he, if he had any regen items, like a mech or something, it's not really worth it. You're better off saving it for a burst. It looks like uh, Phantom Assassin got a kill top for 500 gold, so that was really good. Now, at this point, you might be a little confused by my skill build. I actually did leave Fiery Soul at level 1. I, did, I neglected... I decided to pick up stats instead of Fiery Soul. It was at this point that I told uh, Greg that he's probably getting charged, and there indeed is the charge. I'm gonna TP to try to help, and unfortunately he's already really dead. Uh, I don't know if he has evasion. Yeah, he does actually have a lot of evasion levels, but got a little unlucky there, I guess. So I lose another TP scroll. I'm gonna sentry the high ground just to make sure they don't have a ward there. And it might be hard for us to actually fight this. He, he actually does not have buyback gold, so... Put an observer ward on the high ground as well, so now we can feel a little safer. I'm going to do a Dragon Slave, just to slow down the creep wave a little bit, and now I'm going to be getting charged. I was able to land the stun. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Looks like we lost the tower. Yeah, we did. We did end up losing the tower there. I didn't realize there was still stuff going on here. Unfortunately, I did use my one sentry use at top. 
think our team is pretty happy with just taking that because I think a lot of us brought up HP and mana and stuff. Might get a kill here. Okay, cool. Got another kill there. That's pretty good. One down. Four to go. See if this charge continues here. Haste. Just wanted to place Dyer's the ward before I died. You guys like my jukes? This guy is crazy, man. I was way, I was way too far of a dive. Again, I'll ulti him when he's low HP. Just gotta kill him, man. All this free XP helps a lot, by the way. Like, getting to f level 14 as Alina is, is not very expected. Okay, he actually does have a dust, so that should be a pretty easy kill. So, the reason I'm grabbing stats instead of Fiery Soul is because there's a Spirit Breaker on the enemy team and I need to stay alive as much as possible. Um, I really do not want to be dying. Um, the extra attack speed is obviously useful, but I'm generally a bit better off, I think, just picking up um, stat levels. So, more int is always kind of nice as well. It gives you more mana pool, slightly more HP, slightly more armor. Um, I bought a Staff of Wizardry here. I'm not sure if this is for a four Staff or Yules. Yules is pretty nice for the instant disable. I can, it's actually pretty good stopping Spirit Breaker Charge, especially if you guys don't have any stuns. If you have a lineup where you actually have very few disables, um, just use the Yules as he charges in. If you stun him while he's charging or interrupt him while he's charging, this, the charge will stop. The charge will be done. GG. Um, it's usually really hard to do, especially at at later points in the game when um, might be dead. Um, it's usually pretty hard actually to um, disable his charge. Let's see what level he's at, by the way. Yeah, this is one of his issues actually that might have affected how his uh, team fight's going. He actually maxed out empowering haste. I'm dead right now, so I guess we can just watch somebody else's perspective. But. Man, this guy's map control is... Watch me instead. I expect you to end up going into this. This is a good TP. Uh, what was I talking about? Um, yeah, he should have maxed out charge second, probably. Um, I, I do like at least one or two levels of Empowering Haste, his his aura for movement speed, but um, if his charge speed is increased, it, it gives you less time, once you see him, to throw a stun, basically. And maybe what, that one time that I stunned him top, for example, by the tier 2 tower, he probably would have hit me, because it was really close. If he would have hit me that one time, then I maybe would have died, and the teamfight would have been completely different, for example. So I think maxing out charge second is the right way to go, because it gives uh, your opponents less time to, just, to react. Um, the best stone we actually have to stop charge is Flame Break. Um, so I, I don't remember if, if Blitz ended up using it that often, but it's got a giant AoE. It's a mini stun. It shoots almost immediately. So he should actually be able to uh, stop the charge in its tracks as it comes in. If he can do that, it would make a big difference for our team. So now I'm level 14, grabbing wards. My mana pool is really healthy. I have pretty good utility items with the urn. I have a wand. Everybody should buy a wand if you're playing support. I've still been putting wards on the map. Hasn't helped a ton, but it is helping. And we have some places to farm. If we want to see how close we are in terms of GPM or something. Um, RPS net worth is actually up there. Uh, the rating team is in the lead in terms of gold. But we're winning in EXP because we do keep getting kills. Getting kills on Spirit Breaker and stuff like that. So don't be afraid to farm the jungle, by the way, if you're playing support Lena. She's one of the nice supports for the fact that she can actually jungle very easily. Any support that has AoE can actually jungle very, very easily. Our bottom is actually in our jungle. I think I think this was spotted. Yeah, I believe it was. Looks like the Spirit Breaker actually stopped his charge for once. Much obliged. Got a kill. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. We went a little too hard on this prophet, maybe. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. 
Tower. Use that aggressively while I juke in here. I thought he would be coming in here for sure. And he did not end up doing this. My Pretty crazy and close team fight, actually. So our bat rider is still gonna die. So that's 800 gold. So Prophet actually cleaned up pretty good there. He got mice. He killed myself as well as the uh, bat rider. I don't know what Idrio was working with. He actually does have a BKB, but he didn't use it, so he must have forgotten to pop it, which kind of hurt us a lot because he did he did die very early in the fight, and he's by far our highest net worth here. So my net worth is very, very low, down at 4,500, but I actually still can do quite a bit. Which should just kind of explain why Lina is awesome. But again, you always just blow your Laguna. Honestly, I haven't been trying to kill Steel with it. I did end up killing the Potom in that fight, but you don't really use it just to kill Steel. It's not for that. It's honestly to focus down people from very high amounts of HP to low amounts of HP. And it's usually better to do it initially, because if somebody's disabled for 3 seconds, you know that you have a bit of time to try to blow them up. This scared me. But you basically need to put them in a scare, in a low HP, because like your important heroes are looking to kill steel, right? Like Spectre or PA or something. If somebody is at full HP, they're going to be maybe a little bit less willing to jump on them. We knew Roshan was up, by the way, so... Alright, we unfortunately did not have detection. This looked pretty bad. Luckily, I was able to juke away. I didn't know if they were following me or not. I really wanted to ulti this guy. Oh, I really wanted to leave that guy. I had like no idea where their tomb was at this point. I have trusted your eyes. Not really sure how PA got that kill. Cause I think the Prophet had a Shadow Blade, so I don't, don't really know why. the EMP did not land. So I'll just earn myself back up to full HP. Radiance middle tower is under attack. So while they're taking Roshan, put one ward down obviously to spot things out that tower but whatever we got first tower someone should probably take that or my buying this four stuff yep so i'm getting a four stuff i think i decided that my hp is finally okay enough where i would start grabbing more fiery soul so i did end up only getting two extra stats to uh two two extra levels of stats but some of those early points can make a big difference so I think I got my fourth staff finish. I just have to have the courier bring it to me. So this will allow me to position to get to team fights better. I'm about to hit six as well, so this is pretty big. This means my ulti will do an extra, a lot more damage actually. So it's like 25 to seven. It's like 275 more damage with my ulti. The cooldown also goes down further. The mana cost goes up a lot, up to 680. That's 700, so that's half my mana pool just to ulti, but whatever man, it's totally worth it. Unfortunately, my items are actually on the courier, so somebody took the courier. I guess I didn't really need to go to base otherwise. But he's got a hyperstone now. I told him to get an AC, I think, or something like that. We also decided that uh, sentries are more important than obs right now. I do have two wards on the map. Again, I'm not very creative in my observer ward placement, and if people really wanted to counter ward me, I don't think it'd be very hard because I usually put them in about the same spots, and, and they're usually pretty obvious spots, but they give you good enough map control. I put the one by Roshan, and I like putting the one over there in that little cliff because it spots out um, movement towards the mid lane a bit more. But it's just really, really nice to have a force step. You got arrowed, so. Um, if you would have seen, I told him at the time, if he saw the arrow coming, he probably should have BKB'd, because as soon as he gets hit by the arrow, he will die, for sure, so. 
But yeah, the force staff can basically be used now to uh, anticipate Spirit Breaker charging in. And then we are a little scared about scared about them possibly Hello. ulting to come in mid. So I put the sentry down, and they did actually just now pop their ulti. I think they were checking the jungle for us, but if one of our heroes dies, like it's it's obvious that they are going to be looking for pickoffs or something. Unfortunately, Will was on the low ground over here. I don't think we're quite ready for for this team fight. I was really sad that he bashed me there. I was getting ready to wand in for stuff. <laughs> to be honest, we shouldn't even fought this. This is an example of what Spearbreaker should do. He, he honestly should wait till the fight's a little chaotic, and then he should charge me every time. And then he should just kill me. Cause my armor, my armor is still pretty crappy. Told him to back from that because it would have been a little a little dicey. Even going uphill like that was pretty scary. All right, so now there's going to be a gem on the Batrider. Um, I draw my wand temporarily to grab Observer Wards and Sentries. This is definitely the choice that you guys should make. Oftentimes. And now he he popped his BKB because he felt scared, like uh, last time. Better safe than sorry, honestly. Because the, the main reason we got in a bad spot in the last fight is because he ended up getting picked off. So I'll go back to the jungle, can uh, do a little bit of warding here. I actually do an have an observer on the high ground, they definitely spotted me placing that as well. Dang, he's got an agon him. It's like a super farmed... Best stun you've ever seen. another really good benefit of having good warding, like if you always have a ward up and people place the wards, it's really easy to de-ward because you can see them warding. I tried to take all those, but uh, I believe uh, Idra did. So I'm going to go force staff back, go get some heals. And I took the timing on my next ward and it's, it's almost out, so I need to go reward. Or not. Invisibility! So we're regaining some map control. Um, looks like Prophet is pretty vastly out farming us. He's, he's really farmed now. Shadowblade, Desolator, and a Sheepstick. It's basically this split push build. Really good stuff. Where's my hero? Oh, there I am. Unfortunately for us, our Spectre is an idiot and decided to build Scotty first, which is a pretty bad build. Um, it gives you more HP, which is good, and you can chase pretty okay, but your damage output is really crappy. It's really crappy without Desolate. If you get Desolate damage, whatever, you can grab a Scotty if you really want to and still do pretty okay damage. But once they all group up, it puts you in a really bad spot. So we have a pot of multi coming here. Brought the Observer Ward back. Luckily my stun landed on too. So I got pretty lucky with my stun. I went to, I threw it on the Invoker, and it ended up landing on both the Invoker and the Spirit Breaker. So I was able to pop my ulti on the Spirit Breaker to finish him off, or at least get him extremely low. I went to earn the uh, Spectre there, but he got hit by a tower, unfortunately. So one earn charge wasted. My mana's so low. So now I'll just heal up my allies. I don't remember if Roshan was up or not, but I believe at this point we got a little scared or something. I think we kind of wanted to continue pushing, but everybody spread out to 
go jungle or something. After that, it made it pretty hard to push here. We definitely waited a bit too long, so we can't push anymore. So we had to back up. We lost too much mana and HP. We actually see a charge coming mid, I believe. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. I'm charging Inspector is a little crazy. Even with a thousand HP, I don't think he would die. It would be a really tough kill. Get my wand coming to me, I believe. Should probably buy some more sentries. Even though we have a gem, I think putting some sentries around the map, map is pretty important. Because it basically assumes that um, if Potom ulties that he'll run into that they'll run into the Bat Rider and the Bat Rider will spot it. If we have sentries around the map placed in lanes and things like that, then there's a better chance that our allies will survive on the setup. So again trying to just be safe. Sitting behind allies and stuff like that. Really didn't want to get too committed to this uh, Forge Spirit, so I just wanted to attack it really fast and get out. Alright, so we got the AC finished on the PA, Illusion. which is a BKB and a Battle Fury, so our damage is actually really good right now. This is the part where I crap my pants. I thought their whole team was there. I really didn't know. So I put a sentry down. I think I might have some items coming on the courier. Yeah, it looks like I've got items coming to me from the courier. I assume it's going to be observer wards, because we definitely need an observer ward to rush on, and rush on's almost up. Here we go, Observer Ward's all good. So, one Observer Ward down to cover Rush. We'll be up in about a minute. So I think the plan was to go sit in the jungle for a bit and farm. And then we can go take Rashawn. Um, items from this point. Again, Yules would be kind of nice, but it's probably too expensive. Honestly, the items I'm working with right now are pretty much what you should expect to have as a support hero in a late game situation. If you're playing your hero right and like warding and stuff and you're not like completely snowballing against the enemies, this is this is not too uncommon to have this little farm. Like a four staff and an arcane boots and a wand is you should be really happy. We have our Spectre deciding to really dive solo here. He definitely went a little too deep, like really, he went way too deep, honestly. I did ulti the Prophet here. Okay, we did get him, or he will die. Those right clicks. Some serious right clicks, guys. So we ended up winning the fight. It's definitely a weird fight, but Spectre overextended really hard. He used his ulti and then he decided... <laughs> I hate so much when people type this. I know that you haven't, guys haven't seen him type anything else, but this guy was a complete dick. He was really, really stupid. But basically he made a bad play, and they used a lot of nukes on him, and he ended up dying, and then we ended up cleaning up, basically. So don't think for a second that that was him that won that fight. It's just like the, the thing to say if you're a douche. It's like, haha, 5v1 five you, you five one, five you one me, is this the only way you can kill me? That guy confuses me a lot. My attack speed is so good. Radiance middle tower has fallen. So all of a sudden I have like a ridiculous amount of money. So about a Mystic Staff, I was like, let's get some more mana. Um, this actually doesn't increase my mana region by too much. Um, it, I do, it does give me some, 
because I have an urn, so if I have a percentage-based mana regen item, grabbing a big int item is pretty good. Uh, but I think I was going for a sheep stick, because I was like, alright, I have a ridiculous amount of money. If I can make a sheep stick, it's a lot better than Yule's for disabling, obviously. I can use it offensively to just shut down the, the Ursa. I can also disable other core heroes. Um, the other thing that makes it useful is if you do Hex, it disables invisibility stuff. So if, if somebody uses their ulti and they're about to escape, or if Potom uses his ulti and somebody's about to escape, I can just Hex them and then they, they will be visible for three and a half seconds. Radiance bottom so that's really useful as well. Under attack. I'm not entirely sure if I should have grabbed the ultimate orb first or the, the Mystic Staff, but um, regardless of just giving me mana pool, uh, the extra 25 damage is also very nice, honestly. Um, because I do attack a lot, and you saw that in the last fight. Cast a bunch of spells and I attack the invoker really fast, and it does add up quite a bit. Since my int gain is so nice. So, doing some ranged DPS is, is definitely a small component of Lena in the late game. Uh, again, I normally shouldn't be the survivable. I should be blowing up pretty fast based on their carry, but um, their carry doesn't really have like a gap closer with a BKB, I think. If, let's check what Potom actually has for items. Um, Potom is honestly just working with an MKB and, and a Maelstrom. And that's because she played off lane. she doesn't have that much farm. The safe lane farmer I think was the Spirit Breaker, and he's obviously been throwing his game away by dying a lot. He's not been making good decisions, he just has an Agams and a Mask of Madness, so... He's definitely not, um, fulfilling the carry role very well. I think I have sentries, but I think we do still have a gem. Alright, I was able to kill the invoker there at the start of the fight. Wanted to pick up the gem here. Yep, yeah, I ready to end up dying. I probably should have stunned before I ultied on the invoker because I could have missed definitely and he should have moved but at least I got my ulti off and I right click the hell out of spirit breaker you guys see Lena kill spirit breaker very often And again, the stun lead up after the lasso gives us a free kill. Middle tower has it was actually really nice that we had um, the initiator and like the follow-up stun was on the best players on the team. Because it really did uh, make a big... It made, it made all of those ganks easy. Like every time that he pulled somebody back, basically we could kill them. See that guy. <laughs> Alright, so that's Lena. When you play Lena, you have to play really safe and you have to like land your disables. Just aim for a core hero or an important hero as your teammates initiate and you gotta throw your combo. Combo with other stuns. Um, always throw your ulti at the start of the fight, don't save it to kill steal, just wait till one of their heroes is out of position in, an, in a vulnerable state and you throw your ulti. It's very, very important that you do that. If you try to save it until you guarantee that somebody's going to die, you're probably going to die because you don't have reliable disables, you're going to get blown up pretty fast. I ended up not getting targeted very much this game and that was an absolute mistake by my um, by my enemies. So just sit back, throw your ulti when you get the chance uh, immediately on a hero that's vulnerable that you're pretty sure you guys can burst down. And once you burst somebody down, it's a huge, a huge boon to your team's teammates. So uh, that's about it. So that's support Lena against the Spirit Breaker. Um, obviously the Spirit Breaker made a ton of mistakes, so it wasn't too hard to play against Spirit Breaker exactly, but we still had a lot of the, like, the TP support and covering allies thing that we needed to win the game, so. 
that is Lena support. All right, thanks so much for watching. So I didn't post a video yesterday. I was really not feeling up to recording anything, so I just didn't. So I hope that's uh, okay with you guys that occasionally I'll do that. But uh, I should have lots of good videos. Uh, the week should be pretty cool for me. Tomorrow I'm going to some YouTube thing in Los Angeles. I think I'm going to a YouTube uh, building, one of YouTube's buildings that is, and they're having like a a talk or something for uh, YouTube channels or something. I'm not really sure. I signed up like two weeks ago. So hopefully get some cool networking in and meet some cool people and see some friends. So I've got that tomorrow. And I have something else coming up that I'm trying to think of. Um, I don't know. What what day is it? It's Monday. I've got garbage tomorrow. I think that's about it. I think my shirts are almost sold out on EU. Let me go check those really quick while, while I have you guys here if you're interested. Um, we, we are working on reprints, I believe. The... I think the the um, North American store reprints have been put in as of today. I want to choose Europe. Let's see if we got any of these left. They are sold out in everything but small and medium, surprisingly. So large, extra large, and 2XL sold out in the EU. Interesting. In the US, the medium sold out first. And I thought we were obese. I don't, I don't know what's going on here, but... Or maybe... I, I, I don't know. I don't know. On the bright side, EU is definitely not the most obese country in the world, so I guess they still win, technically. Okay. All right, I think that's it, guys. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I appreciate it. Um, I, I recently redid all my playlists, or I, I updated all my playlists a day or two ago, so if you guys want to find more videos in certain categories, go check out my playlist section. I categorize by, like, replay commentaries or live commentaries or Skype with friends or... Um, I made VODs from like TI3, or I made playlists from TI3, and I made playlists from Landhammer. So if you have trouble finding any of those games, they're a lot easier to find now. So go check out the playlist if you want to see more specifically catered things. Um, if you like a certain category, then obviously you can uh, watch more videos of that. And I'm sure that there's at least a couple of videos in there that you guys haven't seen. Like I know, I know that there's a lot of passionate guys out there watching, and 5% women. I guess I should probably say that. I know there's a lot of you guys that watch a lot of my videos, but I'm sure I've got like a thousand videos. There's a lot of stuff to watch. I, I don't know if, am I over 2,000 subs yet or 200,000? So I can check that too while we're waiting. I'm pretty darn close. I think I'll pass this week. All right, I'm about 700 away from 200,000 subs. So, woohoo. All right, I think that's it. Goodbye, guys. <laughs> I held you too long. See ya. Closing exploit.